Crockett vs. Luffy at the point of it happening was the best fight in the series up to that point. It was the first real challenge for Luffy. Think about it up to that point. All of the other villains he had faced, there was some weird caveat as to why he could not take down the villain. Arlong, he got like stuck in a rock or something at the bottom of the ocean and Sonny had to go get him. He got trapped in the cage versus Buggy. I think he was just lost when Mr. 3 was there. I could be wrong on the lost part, but he, there was some nonsense going on as to why he wasn't there. This was really frustrating for me to watch at first. I wasn't used to something like that being the reason why a character wasn't able to fight and it consistently happened. We finally get to Alabasta, and I'm just gonna go right to the fight. There was three different fights, I believe. Once in the casino, a second time in the desert, and then another time on top of the palace, and that was when he eventually defeated him, and I know that battle changed battlegrounds at times, but let's go into each one. The first one in the casino was really cool that a warlord was really not going to be that easy to take down. The end of the first fight really had you feeling like this crime syndicate was going to be an issue, and you were like, what extent is Luffy going to be able to go to save his friends? And it was a really cool dynamic of like, Luffy and his friends trying to take down these big bad spy-like mob like villains in crocodile and when he gets rolled you're like really how is he gonna do this i know hindsight obviously 2023 the whole hockey thing it's a really weird situation it is what it is i think like you gotta give oda a break here i don't think you really could have anticipated the series going the way it was gonna go that's neither here nor there that was an epic epic moment <laughs> to see luffy get tested like that you were really sad there like how does anyone deal with a Logia? I don't even know how Oda intended on anyone dealing with a Log Logia up to that point. You guys saw Luffy. He was going to have to get creative to beat him. And then you see him in the sand dune next. This was kind of a weird one. It had some super epic fan art and stuff to it with how they met in the middle of the desert. Crocodile, like the fight was a little more competitive. And there were some really dope moments there in the desert, in the dunes. But it was still kind of a weird wash where like you knew not enough time passed and Luffy didn't really do anything to get to really justify that being a different fight than how it happened. With the second fight, when he, Luffy gets stabbed, you're just like, what just happened? Like, how did that happen? Like he's made out of rubber. He hasn't been able to really take damage at this point. When he gets stabbed, you're really left there like, oh my goodness. Like, like he might not ever be able to beat him. And Luffy was stuck in this quicksand at the end. I was really sitting there like, I don't really know how this is going to happen. And then when Miss All Sunday, of course, Nico Robin goes and saves him at the end. You were kind of like, okay, this character is definitely different. From the start, she almost seemed like she was going to be different in a mean and evil way. And like, just a cruel, torturous character. I was sitting there really wondering, like, what are her values when she pulls Luffy out of the sand? Then, of course, everything happens in between. And then Luffy gets back up to the castle. And this is where Oda was a master pre-time skip. A lot of people are talking about how different the series was. With how creative Luffy would have to get in his fights. At that point, Luffy has lost to Crocodile two times. Luffy knows he has to do something different. There's no way he's just going to outwill and outgun him. It just doesn't make sense. He's literally saying, how do you beat that? So Luffy has a joke of water on his back. And it was just epic. It was a super dope way to be creative in that and then you think okay Oda has figured it out this is how his main character is going to beat the antagonist he has water and he will find a way to knock him out of course Oda being the goat he is he just wrote Luffy runs out of water and you're kind of sitting there like okay what does he do now I believe it was his blood that allowed him to hit Crocodile in the end and then that battle changes place where they go underground in front of the pony glyph. The first time we see a pony glyph is in a battle. And some of the panels and the creativity in the paneling and the fight is honestly a level that we don't really see in One Piece today anymore, unfortunately. We see Luffy have to hit himself to kind of redirect himself to get in different angles. And it was just like, we don't see that anymore, unfortunately. We really just see big hockey clashes, which is... A huge dichotomy within the community whether hockey is a good thing or a bad thing. There's a lot of pre-time skip supporters and obviously your preference is your preference. But it made the story feel a lot more unique and Luffy was going to have to figure that situation out. And he eventually lands the shot that takes Crocodile down. And at that point, at that point in the series, it was like wow, Luffy really had to work for this one. And I feel like later in the series, I won't spoil it for anyone, but it really gets annoying with how much Luffy loses to the main villain. 
but i feel like i think a lot of you will agree in that moment it was so different it was really cool it was really dope it kind of had this feeling like luffy's to james bond taking down the big bads in the sense where he's like goofy of course and obviously that was one of the first save the kingdom arts and it was like oh wow this is like arlong park but like cooler and way more depth that fight really went to show just how much Luffy was going to go for Vivi. Someone he had like just met that was honestly on the other people's side for a period of time. To his perspective anyways. And it was really like this was a gang. You really felt like this was a family. And if you mess with the family, it don't matter how long it takes, who life at risk. Someone is going to go down and it definitely isn't us. You really feel proud of the character there. He just leveled up here. Like that was a warlord he took down. Even later on in the series, you really realize how crazy that is. Now, I just wanted to touch on how awesome that fight was and how dope it was. What were your favorite moments from it? Also, I'm thinking of doing a series where I rewatch all of Alabasta's, so let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. I'm just getting started. We're going to stay consistent, and I'll see you in the next one.